Hi guys and welcome to the episode 1.5 which is gonna be like basic tutorial of JavaScript and CSS and this is gonna be more unscripted tutorial and I'm just gonna show you how to create a super simple game without any frameworks and in the next episode like episode 2 we will create a one with framework also I have Ebola and I might die soon but that's okay the first thing you wanna do is oh, get a IDE or something you write the code in. I highly suggest Visual Studio Code and you probably know how to like Google it and download it yourself. Then you just pretty much create a folder and open a folder, open the folder here. And then we create the three files we're gonna need, like three basic files, which are index.html. Index then we're gonna need main.js and styles.css basically this is gonna be the where the elements are located and such this is gonna be how the game functions and this is gonna be how it looks so we start with in the index.html th there's this useful thing in Visual Studio Code called emmet which basically does it so if you write doc and press enter it automatically makes you the basis of HTML and here you can name it like this or something <laughs> then you're gonna need to import these two to the file because they're not like imported yet so style sheet or styles is gonna be imported with a link you can just type link and press enter and here you point to the path where the style sheet is, which is at the same folder, so it's <laughs> just styles.css. And here at the bottom we're gonna add the script, and here we put source and main.js. <laughs> okay, now that we have that, we're gonna make a super simple, what I call, hello world of incrementals, which is basically gonna be like click a button and a number goes up so we're gonna create the button and just the button can say like click me and then we're gonna show how much how much you have like clicked so we're gonna make a divisor element or I don't know if it divisor div it's kind of a container I'm gonna explain the CSS thing later but this is like a container element <laughs> so clicks zero and then we're gonna need to uh, tell the styles that which ID like the ID of this element so we can access it from the JavaScript later so just call it like I don't know clicks So here we need to add a variable for a click which starts at zero and this basically records the how many clicks you have done. And then we do a function which the button is gonna call which increases our clicks by one. So we do function click and here we do clicks plus equals one. So here we are gonna do it so that on a click, wait, is it on click? We do the click function. Wait, is it correct? Yeah, it's large C. And then we also need to update this right here. So we're gonna in here also get document, which is basically the HTML, and then get element by ID. So we're gonna search an element by this ID here, which is clicks. And then we're gonna change its text content to be Uh, 
clicks and then we put in the variable clicks so now it displays how many clicks you have done so now if we actually go to the folder and we open this index.html you should actually see like this and when you click it it doesn't work why does it work And this is basically <laughs> this is my everyday life also in this Chrome uh, console you can like check all these different variables or call functions here so this is gonna be useful just saying the function appears to work but the button isn't calling it Alright, so the reason is that the click is already defined in a button, so we just need to rename it. Increase clicks. But whenever you encounter a problem, just google it and f see some stack overflow thing that that's gonna help you. So now it works. So here we have our basic clicker game. Okay. Um, we also I have also made like this simple incremental. We're gonna make next because this is too simple. Which is basically this polynomial growth thing where there's ten layers and you know the same same old shit. We can just like make it on top of this. So let's move everything. <laughs> or not everything. That should be enough. So uh, we're gonna need the thing that displays our currency. So we're gonna create a div for that and give it an ID of, I don't know, <laughs> currency you have ten dollars and then we're gonna create a container for for the uh, generators or buttons and we're gonna give this a class and with Emmet you can easily give, give classes by writing the name of the like tag and then dot and the class name, so container or something like that. <laughs> Generators container and press enter so it creates a one with class generators container. Mm. And inside this we're gonna add ten generators. And that's that's a bit redundant, but this is why we are later gonna use view because doing gen uh, 10 generators is <laughs> this is ugly yeah we're we can actually just leave this to be empty and fill it later in JS so we're gonna need our money which is gonna be 10 at start and then we're gonna need the generators uh, and the best thing would be to save them in a, in an array. This is an empty array. An array is basically like a list of variables. So we instanti instantiate it with an empty array, and then right after we're going to write a loop that fills the array. And there's this thing called for loop. You give it a variable. Uh, let is an like var, but um, when the loop ends it doesn't leave the variable hanging I don't know if you understand but I'll show you soon so i is 0 and when i is smaller than 10 so it goes to 0 to 9 and then 
for each step it increases by one. So this is how you do a for loop. And inside the for loop we're gonna make these generators. So we're gonna do let so it doesn't escape outside these brackets. The, what let basically does it it keeps the thing inside the brackets. So if we call like I here, then here it would be undefined because it's a let. So generator equals and here we're gonna add another of these girly boys and this is gonna be an object and and an object is basically a bit like a list but for each variable you have a key so we're gonna have like generator cost which is gonna be it needs to be like something based on i so that the later generators cost more than the first ones so we're gonna do like math pow which is basically a power and 10 and i which is gonna be so that the first generator would be uh, 10 to the power of 0 which is 1 and the second 10 to the power of 1 which is 10 etc but that's gonna be for the later generators way too low cost because you're gonna reach those amounts pretty fast so we're just gonna add another pow so it's like 10 to the power of i to the power of i so we get a bit bigger numbers then we're gonna need to add a variable to track how many you bought and it's gonna start with zero and amount which is gonna start with zero and we're also gonna add a multiplier variable which is gonna start at one then we're gonna just push this generator into the generators so generators push generator and this will fill up those we can test it here generators we have a 10 generators so now that we have those we are gonna create our update graphical user interface function or update GUI later on we are not gonna be needing these just because we are gonna use a framework and it will handle this for us we are, need, we are gonna need also an ID for each of those these generators like gen1 so that we know which generator we, we are updating so here we are gonna do another for loop so we're gonna update all the generators we can just like borrow this from here and then we're gonna make document get element get element by id gen and then we're gonna do i plus one because it will go from zero to nine and these go from one to ten so we just need to plus one and here we will do inner html so we can add html here and we're gonna do first show the amount which is gonna be actually let's let's do a let g for generator and generators and here you can with these brackets you can pick like one instance from the generators and they start at zero so we want to because i starts at zero so now it will go through all the generators g amount 
Actually, at this point, we're gonna make a short formatting function because we're gonna need that. We don't want to like see these huge numbers. So this function takes a parameter, which is gonna be the amount of like the number. And here we're gonna take the power like what comes after the E which is gonna be flooring the logarithm 10 function of the amount and then we need this mantissa which is gonna be amount divided by 10 to the power of power And then we just return Mantissa to fixed. This is basically gonna like force to it to be two decimal places plus e plus power. And then we can also do that if the power is less than three, so it doesn't display like like one e one then it just returns the amount to fixed <laughs> and then we here we'll format this amount <laughs> then we're gonna need to show this is gonna be like a line breaker uh, it's an HTML element that the, normally you I, I guess you wouldn't want to use this but we'll use them anyway so then we'll display how many you bought which is gonna be I don't think we need to format the both amount because it's not gonna be that big And then we're going to display the multiplier. <laughs> and throw an x here, which shows it's like times, I guess. And then lastly, we'll show the cost. Let's actually format this multiplier. Okay, so now we have this update GUI. We can actually call it here when the page loads, so we will see the generators, but they look ugly as fuck currently. Let's also in here update the currency. So document get element by ID currency text content. The difference between inner HTML and text content is that with text content you can't put he these here but if you don't have any like HTML elements in the string then you should use text content because it's faster. <laughs> Format money. Okay. So, next we're gonna create the function that generates, like, make it so that the lower tier generators produce higher tier. So, we're gonna create our product loop or production loop. And this is gonna take uh, diff as a parameter and this diff it's gonna be the time difference between updates so we're gonna use that so so that when you go like off tab and you come back even though the Chrome decreases the update rate it will like 
calculate the time between the last update so it's gonna be better and this also if you save later we're gonna like make a save system it's gonna work with even the saving so we're gonna make another for loop for each of the generators actually let's let's do the first generator first because uh, the first generator produces money and the rest produces generators so let's do money plus so we'll increase the money by uh, generators the first one with the index is index zero amount times generators zero mult times diff and this diff is gonna be like the difference between the last update in seconds so the value is in seconds and here we are gonna generate the actual generators we'll start this with a one because here we handle the first generator so we'll do generators i minus one minus one amount plus equals will increase the amount of the previous generator by this generator amount times this generator multiplier times diff and then we're just gonna add the divided by five so it's like one in five seconds the base so I think this should work and then we're gonna create our main loop and at the start we'll actually here do a last update which is gonna track the time time of the last update and we can see by just doing date now here we do that if equals uh, date now minus last update so this is gonna be the difference between the last update I mean difference since the last update in milliseconds so we're gonna divide it by thousand so now it's in seconds and we're gonna call the production loop here and give it the diff as a like a parameter and then we just also you update the GUI and at the end we're gonna update this last update so last update equals date now so now it should probably work oh yeah you also need to add an interval so this function takes a function as a parameter and then like milliseconds time so we're gonna pass it this main loop function as a parameter and also how often do we want to update it we're gonna do 50 milliseconds which is, which is basically 20 times a second <laughs> and this should work I think we're not seeing any errors on the console so that's good so now we're gonna move on to the styles and we're gonna first make this generator class so you select the class by doing dot generator dot is the class like definer and then we're gonna add it display flex and this flex is something that you should learn there's this game called flex frog which kind of like explains the basics of it 
how it works. And there's also other displays like block, which is basically that it takes the whole width of the like container. And there's also inline, which doesn't take the whole width. But uh, if you get stuck, you should always like Google it or read the documentations of CSS. There's like a thousand sites which explain the CSS things. Then we'll give it. Uh, Oh wait, this is actually the generator. We're gonna we're not gonna want to display flex this. So this is gonna have a border, let's say two pixels wide, it's solid and the color is I don't fucking know. Let's Okay, the color is cocky. <laughs> and the background color is gonna be Beige. These are a bit too similar, but whatever. It's just gonna be to show how these things work. So now, if if we check the site out, we're gonna see that it basically works like this. Then we're gonna define the. Make it so that the text is centered. And make the maximum width or the width of the element 300 pixels and give it padding. Padding is basically the like room inside of the element. I'm gonna show you so it to you in a bit. So basically this space here is padding. So it's not so clumped up. Okay, we can also increase the font size a bit. Uh, you can type the font size in pixels or you can do like EMs. Uh, the default is one EM. And you can like make it 30% bigger by doing 1.3 EM. Here's some weird shit happening. What's this? <laughs> Armanti size a bit odd. Oh yeah, this needs to be divided by. Yeah, now it works. So now we have these containers here. We're also just gonna add it so that the cursor on top of the containers is gonna be the pointer. Yeah. <laughs> so these generators are in this generators container class. And this is gonna have the display flex on it. And the width of this is gonna be twice this. So it's gonna be also let's uh, this applies style to all like all elements and Box sizing equals border box. This removes some issues you might have with like margins and stuff like that. And because we want them to be like side by side, we're gonna add flex wrap wrap. This basically does it so that they're not all in one row, but they can. Uh, switch rows, so it seems to work pretty fine. Um, let's actually give this margin out, which basically does it so that it's gonna be centered, and then we need to just 
I guess then we just need to style this so you select in CSS you select IDs these with this but you should also use classes in CSS IDs is a bit bad practice So let's give this a margin, which is basically padding, but on the outside. Let's give it in every direction a margin of, say, 40 pixels. And increase the font size by, I don't know, double the normal. And uh, let's center the text. All right. You can also, in the Chrome console of elements, you can see here this, this, uh, I don't know, is that orange or something, brown color is the margin, and the blue is the actual element, and the green is the padding. And you can also, in the console, change the elements to be bigger so you can like try out things which looks best to you like that but when you refresh they go back so you just need to change them in the CSS <laughs> okay so next we're, what we're gonna do is create the uh, things that when you click these it buys the generators so function by generator and the index of the generator uh, let's say this is from 1 to 10 because these are from 1 to 10 so first we need to check if we have enough money or actually let's just get the generator with this because it's 1 to 10, it starts with and these arrays start always from 0, so we'll do it like that so if g cost is uh, bigger than money then we'll just return this quits the function so it doesn't go any further and then if you have money we can continue and we can reduce that money g cost and then we'll increase the amount by one then we'll increase the bot amount by one and we'll increase the multiplier uh, or multiply the multiplier by say ah, fuck. Five, 5 0.05 so 5% increase for every you bot this should work and we'll just need to add it the on click thingy out oh yeah it doesn't increase the cost yet and also the first starts to one so we're gonna just probably make it so that each of the costs starts ten times bigger so we're gonna add uh, times ten here and we're gonna multiply the cost 
by say 1.5 okay and it started generating these so it appears to be working like we want the last thing we want to add is so that it's easier to see if you can afford something or not so we are gonna make it so that the button goes red if you can't afford it also one problem is if you click this fast enough it will select the text so we're gonna just add user select none here so you can select the text it doesn't bother you and in the update GUI we'll here we loop the generators already so we can just check if if G cost is bigger than money then we're gonna document get element get element by ID gen class list and we're gonna add it a class called locked and if we have enough money so else we're gonna remove the locked class and here we'll define that uh, you know you um, Elements can have multiple classes, so that's why we can like add or remove classes gla Classes and with this we can select uh, An element with the class generator and the class locked if you hover over this you can see which kind of elements it selects Like that and we're just gonna add it to background color Off I don't know red you can also if you hover over here, you can modify this. <laughs> so now, if you can't afford it, it's red. And it works as suspected. <laughs> so now our game works. And in the next tutorial, we're gonna actually make the game with view. So we don't have to deal with this updating GUI and making 10 generators in HTML so that's gonna conclude the tutorial hopefully my ramblings made sense and remember to eat ass and prosper <laughs>